Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's a new topic for us in mechanics. Um, this time we're going to talk about mechanical waves. Now that's a big topic again in physics. And let's start with some basic ideas about what waves are. So first of all, I've driven, I, I've driven, I drew something on the board here that looks like a wave. And waves have what we call wave lengths. Notice that these are the peaks of the wave. This is called the trough just like what pigs they eat out of. So the peak, the trough, the peak, the trough, peak, trough. The distance between any two peaks or any two, two uh, troughs or any two similar points on the wave is called the wavelength. And we use the Greek letter lambda to indicate that. So it's basically a distance from one peak to the next. Then also a wave as it moves, it tends to move in a direction that is perpendicular to the displacement of the wave, like this, so the displacement is like this, but the velocity wave is from left to right or from right to left. So the displacement of the wave and the velocity wave is actually perpendicular to each other, so that's why they call this a transverse wave. So this is an example of a transverse wave. Notice also the displacement of the wave is called the amplitude, or I should say the maximum displacement of the wave is called the amplitude. The actual displacement anywhere along the wave is simply called the vertical displacement. Now notice, in order to have a mechanical wave, you have to have something that moves in a vertical direction per perpendicular to the uh, velocity of the wave. And for example, a string can do that. If you take a string and you yank it on one side or you oscillate up and down on one side, you can then see that the wave will then displace itself along the string. And so the string itself, the particles on the strings, the atoms on the strings move vertically up and down, but the wave velocity moves uh, perpendicular to that displacement. So also notice that all waves have really one purpose in life, if you want to call it that, is to transport energy. So as you wiggle on a string on one side and then the wave starts moving off into the distance, it's carrying the energy that you put into the wave by moving up and down along the wave. So waves really are what we call energy transporters. And of course, in the way we drew it here, it would be in the x direction as the particles of the string go in a vertical direction, the y direction. Notice that the position of any point on the string as it goes up and down will depend upon where we are on the wave, so in terms of x, and how much time has elapsed. So it's a function of position and time, and we'll look at that in more detail in a later video. Notice not all waves act like that. For example, the waves that travel through the air, which are sound waves, a different kind of mechanical wave, those waves travel through the air because of the compression of the air molecules. So when you talk or when you make a noise, so when I go like this and I make a noise, that compresses or that causes the board to shake or causes my vocal cords to shake. Those then push against air molecules which then feel compressions and rarefactions. Again, topics to be covered in a later video. But again, you can see that the, the distance from one compression of the wave of the air to one, another compression of the wave because those, those compressions travel through the air, of course in this case in all directions, that is also called a wavelength, but those kind of waves are called longitudinal waves because the vibration of the particles are in the same direction as the motion of the wave, the velocity or the energy of the wave. So we're going to concentrate on transverse waves for now, and then when we get to the videos about sound waves, we'll talk a little bit more about the longitudinal waves and the sound waves. All right, so again, basics is that when you take a string and you wiggle up and down at a particular frequency, Frequency is the indication of how many times per second you bring the string up and down. That energy will then go along the string particles uh, as a wave, carrying the energy and carrying the wave uh, away from the source of the energy. The displacement is vertical on the wave particles. The motion is horizontal in the x direction. The amplitude is the maximum displacement of the wave. The wavelength is the distance from one peak to another peak. Now, when we put this together, the relationship between wavelength, frequency, and velocity is a very basic combination, a very basic equation in physics. The velocity of any wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So that's the basic equation. Now, if, for example, we have a wavelength equal to 5 meters, and let's say that we have a frequency equal to 20 hertz. 
let's say that we whip the wave up and down at 20 times per second. Of course, that would be hard to do with a hand. That would have to be done with a mechanical device, probably. We could then say that the velocity of the wave is uh, frequency 20 hertz, which is actually 20 uh, cycles or, or oscillations per second. So the term hertz is so many times per second. So there's no unit in the numerator, but there is a unit in the denominator, meaning seconds. So that's 20 times 1 over seconds, that's the frequency, multiplied times the wavelength of 5 meters. Notice the units then are meters per second, and so this would be 100 meters per second. So that's your basic concept of what a wave is. Remember, a mechanical wave is some object like a string or some matter, some mechanical device that moves up and down in such a way that the energy and the velocity of the wave moves then in a perpendicular direction called a transverse wave. The wave will have a wavelength assigned by the distance between the peaks, a frequency, the number of times to move the string up and down per second, and then the resulting velocity of the wave, which can then be easily calculated using this basic equation. And that's your basic idea of a wave. In the next so many videos, we'll get into more detail of how to describe wave motion, wave energy, and so forth.